All right, so let's cut the bullshit for one moment. And one moment only. And so today we'll be uh, picking up on an old habit and we'll be uh, retrofitting this uh, fixture with some uh, lithium ion power. Uh, right, these will chew through three uh, AA's. I don't know how fast. Uh, we can actually check. Uh, but uh, yeah, that's pretty unacceptable. I don't know. I mean, these, these could just have USB and... Uh, well, then the plug that's plugged in then also uses some power. I don't know, still... Uh, so what I'll be going with is a TC4056 charger module, which is this, Type-C of course, and uh, a lithium-ion battery from my stash. But uh, let's first of all check the power consumption and the color of this because I actually have never seen it lit. Alright, so uh, let's see. Let's start off with two volts in just in case this is red. What kind of a current do we have? Uh, very low. Let's uh, beef up the current ever so slightly. All right, 200 milliamps. Although that's kind of like anyway. So, what connectors are we looking at? I would assume, right? What will be negative. And this would be positive. All right. All right, it's purple. So what would it be? Um, three times uh, 1.5, so 4.5. Right, so this is at five, this is about a watt. Yeah, this is very dim, so let me turn the lights off. That looks pretty nice. Did I kill it? I oh, know I killed the supply as well. Anyway, yeah, this looked kind of nice. All right, so this is gonna work pretty well with uh, a lithium ion directly across it. So let's actually simulate that. So uh, it'll never get up this, this bright, so it'll be uh, what? 4.2 and again this is uh, moderately bright maybe we put a uh, a booster in there but uh, i'm not sure and then it'll go down to three and at three it, it is super dim let me turn the lights off again and uh so we'll have a few seconds of uh, seeing how it looks uh, i suppose I don't know. For the sake of simplicity and efficiency, I think I'll uh, I'll just leave the eighteen uh, the the battery and uh, the TC four zero five six as the only components. Let's see what kind of a draw we had there. So, point eight watts. Yeah, point oh eight watts. Sorry. So less than a tenth of a watt. Very nice. Should run for quite a long time until this cuts off the cuts off the battery. All right. So for my next trick, I'll be pulling up a fire hazard, which uh, I am working on uh, resolving, and that is let me actually zoom out a bit. A wooden box lined with cloth, full of lithium-ion batteries. Very nice. See, so yeah, I'm genuinely afraid of sleeping next to this, and I have uh, acquired a metal box, which I have to paint the insides of, and that takes quite a while. But uh, anyway, so uh, we have an old iPhone battery. Could we fit this in? No. All right. Does one of these fit in here? I think we could just... Let me see if I can uh, take the back off of this and um, give ourselves a bit more room. Okay, okay, so it's so this is how it is. All right. Uh, let's quickly redo the uh, the test without the resistor because maybe we don't use it. We see. So let's see. Let's see. 
Well, being um, this purple, I'm assuming these LEDs are white. Well, actually blue LEDs uh, exciting some phosphor. So it should have a uh, pretty high forward voltage. So let's see at, I think we do need the resistor. All right. Hmm, one watt. Yeah, but uh, we are kind of limiting, so let's see how, how aggressive that goes. No, this is too great. Yeah, it's too great. Okay, so um, I can't read uh, resistors, so I don't know what this is, but um, I think we'll keep it. Or what we could also do is uh, get one of these uh, switching buck converters. So these are very, very, very energy efficient. And I think we'll uh, we'll swap the one resistor with one of these. We'll just have to fine tune it. Uh, so I'll just link some wires up right now to uh, set the value of this. And, um, and then I'll get back to, uh, to speaking. So let's actually see how it handles 3.3 uh, volts because that is a set value on this. And so it kind of has this brightness, let's see. Uh, like uh, half an amp. Is it? No, like, well, but it's a bit much. So what else do we have? And the reason why I would prefer to use the uh, set resistors on the side instead of the rotary one, instead of the variable resistor, is that these uh, do get moist over time and they do degrade and they do have imperfect contact. So they're quite unreliable in my experience. So we still have 2.5. Let's try 2.5. I mean, this, this doesn't have to be like, to be, you don't have to read from this, so, um, no, really, not at all, hmm. okay, all right, so it's now a lot more relaxing to test this out, so let's see, we're at um, 2.9, and we wanted 2.5, and, but no, there's no way, so, but 3.3 is too much, motherfucker, Oh, so I think we have to bridge at least. Yeah, so the way these were done back in the day, uh, the one the one track was always bridged and you had to cut it. And apparently now it's no longer bridged and you have to uh, connect it. So basically bridge, let's see if I can zoom in. So bridge this adjustment all right so that's bridged and uh, now we should get some uh, some voltage on the output let's see Okay, so negative and uh, probe the output. Let's see. Let's see if I can do this in a more camera friendly way, but it's pretty difficult. Fuck. Don't do anything. So the input is 3.6. And it could be that this doesn't work that low, but I'm not sure.
Okay, so now it's set at three volts and I think it just refuses to play under Okay, so you can see the buck working, so we're feeding in 10 volts, 15 volts, 20 volts, and it's still outputting a rock solid 3.0. And its efficiency is also pretty good. You can see the watt figure is fluctuating only slightly. But let's see, right? So 3.5, 3.4, 3 it cuts out. Yeah, cuts out completely, huh? Three point three. Okay, so three point three. So three point three. It then can't keep itself on, right? Probably the enable circuitry needs a bit more voltage. Uh, I don't like this. To be honest, I don't like this. I would rather have it go out dimly, right? Dim itself out rather than uh, cut out. So. We will not be using this. Okay, so my next uh, move will be to eviscerate the old battery compartment. So just uh, pull everything out. Pull the tabs out and uh, this tab. Okay. All right, and I'm thinking, uh, what am I thinking? Do I ever think? Uh, I'm thinking. Have I lost my mind? thinking that we could just cut this whole thing out. And so a good way to cut plastic is a diamond disc wheel. And this will create a very low amount of uh, dust and shrapnel and everything. So it's a pretty good way of doing stuff. Uh, let's, let's get to it. All right, I don't know what exactly um, this pillar is used for, so I think it's for locating and stuff, and so I don't want to cut it. And we're just going from this side. Again, this doesn't have to be extremely beautiful because it uh, should be hidden out of sight, and um, speed is the name of the game. What's this job? So. Okay, so at this point in time, I think we could get the trash out, get the Dremel out, reconnect this to the base, which again, we have to clean up, but uh, all in due course. All right, which way did this go? I think it's the other way. Yeah, all right. Yeah, this is tight. Damn. A tight ass fit. All right, very nice. Good. And now this will go on here. And um, okay, so how do we connect this up? So this would be the red. Okay, so red. 
uh, good and then the minus we can already connect So what this uh, what this board does is um, it has this chip called the TC4056. Before I was called the TP4056. I don't know exactly what the differences are. We could probably pull up some data sheets and check. But uh, what these do is basically they um, limit the current into a lithium ion battery so uh, you can set the current with the current set resistor which is um which is this one here i think r3 and uh what you can do is basically charge it up to one amp and as low as i don't know 100 milliamps or something there's a formula they give uh, give on the data sheet and uh, you can calculate how how fast you want to charge yourself and so these are linear regulators. So whatever they drop is wasted as heat. And why is the focus not working anyway? And um, so what they do is constantly, right? Uh, once every 500 milliseconds or something, they disconnect power to the battery and they measure the voltage of the cell. And they, uh, they allow for constant current constant voltage charging so once they reach 4.2 volts i think they're set to 4.25 or something uh, they will start limiting the current and then at some point they will light the blue led indicating that uh, charge is done and uh, what these also have is a dw01 which is this chip here and that is a charge protection chip always comes together with a dual MOSFET package, which is the bigger one on the left. And what these guys do is basically disconnect the cell once it gets to 4.2. Uh, so that, or 4.3, I don't know how, how high these go. So they will disconnect to prevent overcharging, which is covered by the TC4056 anyway. And, but they will also disconnect to prevent over discharging. So at three volts or 2.8, I don't know exactly. Uh, this chip right will also open this MOSFET to prevent over discharging the lithium cell. So these are very nice uh, little modules. You can get them for like four bucks, ten pieces or something. So uh, quite cheap, quite quite well priced. All right. So right now we're gonna try to figure out a slot <clears throat> for the Type C connector. And uh, this is going to be more of a quick and dirty approach because uh, it has already taken quite a lot of time. And uh, yeah, so I'm just going to eyeball it. Usually you would get the calipers out and uh, do a bit more of a thorough job. But uh, you do have a calibrated eye, so it's fine, right? So this is going to sit something like this. All right. All right. So the one thing I really do want to get... Uh, get right is the straightness so let me see if you can uh, uh do do put do put uh protective eyewear on because you're sitting right um right above the blade so watch your eyes All right. 
Yeah, this is way too big. Fuck. All right, so uh, this is already looking uh, unexpectedly good, and um, I'm just gonna round off, uh, round off the edges. Hope I won't fuck it up, but uh, let's see. I don't know. It's it's okay. It's gonna be fine. All right, this is actually turning out, uh, yeah, pleasing. I'm not gonna lie. It it, it makes me smile. It pleases me. And so basically now I think we're ready to actually start pouring the hot stuff. All right, so my iPhone just restarted. I have no idea why. As I was saying, cut the grooves. Um, this already has some grooves cut into it and uh, we're ready to pop it in. However, there is one thing to consider. And that is uh, the TP4056, as I've mentioned in the beginning of the video, is a linear dropper, meaning that all the voltage it drops, it drops as heat, so it does get quite hot. And this is hot melt glue, so yeah, go figure. What we need to do is first of all zoom out a bit. Let me see if I can... All right. So what we need to do is put a tiny bit of uh, hot snot, a tiny bit and yeah, do I put more yeah no a tiny bit just for rough fixation right? rough initial fixation let's call it and uh, that is already settling quite nicely all right and then we need something that is more temperature resistant so there's two options here and I think I'm gonna go with the with the lazy approach, because again, I'm optimizing, but I can't really, yeah. No, I think I'm just gonna add a lot of hot melt. Uh, so silicone, sanitary silicone doesn't seem to stick to this. I've uh, tried, tried adding some uh, previously and it just comes right off, right, you can see. So that doesn't stick, okay, so hot melt. Yeah, this does get hot, but not that hot. I don't know, it's it's not the nicest solution, let's um, just say. But it should do the job. And if it really does uh, come loose, then um, just put it back into place. I mean, it's, yeah. It's not going to get hot on the back. And if I fill this with hot melt, then it really should be fine. It's going to cover the connections, but again, uh, you can heat everything up unstick the hot melt and then once it's not completely molten you can actually uh, rework it quite nicely and it comes off in in one go in one strip so to say
Right, so the next step will be to carve out some slots for the 18650. And I'm just going to do some straight cuts because uh, why not? So we need kind of this much over here. And uh, how much do we need on the other? Uh, kind of this much. All right, let's get back to the diamond disc. Oh, yeah. Does feel a bit more hollow, but then again, not too bad. Yeah. Uh, to be honest, I'm uh, quite pleased how this came out. So right now we can uh, cover the mess with the cover. And that is that. And uh, yeah, now basically you can charge it via type C USB. Let's get this tiny bit of how is this called again? Anyway. Yeah, I know. If this moves, uh, probably some holes and a zip tie, or I don't know. We'll see. So that's been it for this video. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments.